Crabbers and the Bethel Bruins. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Tim Cole along with Bob Hintz. We welcome you to Bethel High School for today's contest between the Lady Crabbers, ranked in the uh, top ten in the state of Virginia, and the Bethel Bruins. And, Bob, uh, we had hoped to have some pregame uh, coaches interviews, but we had some technical issues that we had to resolve, so unfortunately we won't be able to do that. No, but we'll have, we'll have a good game tonight. There's always a good contest when you have a Hampton and a Bethel teams play, Tim. They are presently introducing the Lady Bruins. The Crabbers have already been introduced to today's crowd, and uh, we will be set to get this game underway very shortly. The Hampton Crabbers with a, uh, an excellent record and atop the district in, uh, on the peninsula. And uh, they, of course, uh, have a superb team and are looking at an opportunity to uh, be the state champs. I tell you, he's got a young lady that has just really come along and has done just exceptionally well. And this young lady by the name of uh, uh, Tia Walker, and she's just a freshman, Tim. But he talked about her two years ago when she was a, she was a seventh grader. He said that she could be playing the JVs at that time. So uh, good, good crew. And here we go with the sponsors, Tim. All right. Tonight's contest is brought to you by Zooms with 14 convenient locations to serve you. By Hampton Chevrolet at 1073 West Mercury Boulevard. Give them a call at 838-5450. And in part by Park Lawn Wood Funeral Home, 827-4670. And we're going to show you the starters as well in just one moment. Saw a picture of a young lady there on the graphic. They snuck one in there just before we got the uh, corporate sponsors mentioned. Yeah, we'll get them, get them in there. Andy's did, did a good job of getting all that stuff together, and I'll talk about a crew a little later on. We got the uh, only jump. Uh, there you go. There is uh, the uh, guard who will start for the Bruins, Brooke Williams, as the tap is controlled by the visiting Crabbers. And the loose ball is finally controlled by the Lady Bruins. There you see the rest of the starters, Ashley Faison, Kaniqua Jones, number 25, Jasmine Lipford. Rounds out the starters for the Bethel Bruins. High arching shot is short, but taken by the Bruins on the offensive rebound. Brooke Williams giving it to number 20, Ashley Faison. She is guarded closely at the top of the key and too closely, as a matter of fact. Well, you'll, as uh, being called for the foul is Rashawn Luter. And we have the Hathaway uh, boys, as I call them. I knew them when they were young kids. Both of them are refereeing, James Hathaway and uh, uh, Mike Hathaway. Well, that's a very familiar name to Peninsula sports fans. Uh, who might their daddy be? Uh, I think he was over Kickatan at one time. I think that's, that's <laughs> the rumor. That's the rumor. Bruins. Oh, trying to work the ball down low, scrambled for it and saved it again. We have no score yet. But look at the double team that the, 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 the Crabbers are doing. They're double teaming everything, every chance they get. And that time successfully steal the ball on the left wing, kick it back outside. This it's, is Boozman, and then she'll give the top of the key to Tia Walker, the aforementioned Miss Walker. We'll give you the starters for the Lady Crabbers in just a moment. Walker drives the lane and draws the foul. She'll get a pair. Here you see the starters. Jasmine Artis, number four. I, these graphics are too much. This Wasn't is beautiful. Great? That's great. These guys have done a great job. Rashawn Luter is number 11. She'll be uh, in there. She's a sophomore, 5'7". Tia Walker, just a freshman. She's the one's on the line right now. Yvette Edwards, number 32, a sophomore. Young team for these Lady Crabbers. And Zelenese Bozeman. CC is they CC, call it. CC, 11th grader. Great graphics. So Walker is able to connect on one of the two. Full court. They're just in your face. We're going to double team. We're going to try to get you to do something wrong. And that was right there. They stepped on the sideline, turning the ball over. That's exactly what the Crabbers want to do, Tim, is they want to do up tempo, uh, make the uh, Bruins take them out of any uh, set offense they've got, make them hurry their shots, hurry their passes, make them play at a level or at a speed that they don't want to play at. Lady. Make it an ugly game, in, in mm -hmm. matter of fact. Not with all these pretty ladies out here. <laughs> well, I don't mean that ugly. <laughs> the Crabbers leading one to nothing as well, we play a minute and a half. Good, don't they? 
Bozeman's shot is too strong, but the offensive rebound is hauled down by Walker. And again, they move the ball nicely. This one a little too strong, and the rebound is controlled by number 10, Johnson of Bethel. We remember Veronica from, uh, she's been playing for the last two years, senior this year at, uh, at the Bruins, on the Bruins squad. We've played about two minutes, and there's still just a one to nothing score. Now we've got a reach-in foul called against the Lady Crevers. Tim, we will pick a player of the game from each one of these uh, teams today, and that player will receive a trophy and a shirt. The trophy comes from Trophy World, and they're located in the historic Hilton Village in Newport News. For all your recognition and award needs, trophies, plaques, and custom engraving, contact Bob Hilling at Trophy World at 595-7354. You mentioned this announcement, you get special pricing, and we just had our basket. Looter with the basket. And the shirt comes from Tidewater Team Sports, one of your, your one-stop sports headquarters for screen printing, embroidering uniforms, and apparel. Call 595-double, I'm sorry, 594-0411 to talk to either David Chubb or Terry McNamara. Give us that number again, Bob. What was that number again? 594-0411. All right. And these guys, we really appreciate it. And these, uh, these young athletes appreciate the recognition when they get these awards as well. Well, and they'll be getting the awards at the end of the game, too. We've got them right here. Shot is short. Offensive rebound is taken by the Crabbers. And then on the ensuing shot, a foul has been called. Our crew tonight, we have Scotty Bowers doing directed. Mike Nowinski is doing instant replay. Andy Foley doing the graphics. Rachel Barnes is in the back as we watch some of our uh, replay there. Don Schrouse, engineer. John Moore's on camera. Ricky Brown's on camera. Uh, Ron Baton's on camera. And Nathaniel Braxton's on camera. Good crew tonight. What did you say, man? What, what did you say? <laughs> I can hear you fine, Tim. <laughs> I was looking for. Uh, Mike, to help me out here, I couldn't pick up the foul. She said number 54 was called for the foul. I don't have a number 54. Well, 54 for <laughs> – where did you see a 54 out there? Well, that's what – never mind. We'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> Five minutes to go. 5-12 to go here in the first period. This is Brian Reaver's first year over here coaching the uh, Lady Bruins, Tim, and he's doing a good job. They, they do a good job against the press. Uh, just got to make sure passes. We'll get and a shot of Brian in a minute. We haven't had a chance to mention the coaches. Brian Weaver is the Bruin coach. And, of course, David Six is the head coach over at Hampton. There you see Brian as his team is behind. And you see David Six, Natalie attired for today's contest. And the foul is on number 32. Foul is on number 32 of the Crabbers. And that is Yvette Edwards, her first. Third team foul. Shot nice shot. Is in. Nice shot. Was that number three that got yeah, that shot? Brooke, Brooke, Brooke Williams. Williams. Okay. And the ball almost stolen by the Bruins. The Crabbers get it back, leading 5-2. to two. This game videotaped on the 28th of January, 2003. Tim Cole and Bob Hintz along with Mike Hauser and the Channel 46 crew coming to you from the Bruins' den. And driving the lane and drawing the foul is Bozeman. I tell you what, CC is very good at that, Tim, because she can't hit that outside three. If you get up on tight on it, she will drive on by you and pick up the foul. But that time she picked the foul up on number 22, uh, Edwards, and by just driving the lane, she got that, and that's what what makes her so good. Am I looking at something? Well, I don't have a 22 for the Lady Bruins. Well, how about that? <laughs> Yeah, I. Hmm. So we'll figure that part out. We don't. Uh, well, I, I, got these, I got what I got. We got these things a little early. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. <laughs> as a matter of fact, had a few number changes, but. But anyway, we'll do what we can do when we can do it, right? There you go. Seven to two is our score. Crabbers with a full court pressure, and it pays off as they steal the ball. Tia Walker. That's a that's a tough pass to make that that far down, especially you put some air underneath it that gives the uh, the defensive player a chance to, to get under. Oh, nice pass. Excellent oh, pass. great block. Better block by number 22, the aforementioned soon to be named. This is Williams. 
Left wing to Lipford. And she spots the open player underneath, but can't hold on to it. So they will turn it over, and the ball will go back to the Lady Crabbers. And now they've uh, indicated, in fact, it will belong to the Bruins. We'll, we'll get a squared away, Bob. This is Veronica Johnson. Now she gives on the baseline and a nice drive, but the basket won't go for Lipford. Follow shot, no good. Scramble for the loose ball, and a jump ball will ensue, and it'll belong to the Lady Crabbers. Uh, I'm trying to find out what, what I understand. We could hear you as you could hear me clearly. I could hear you. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I took my head. Didn't matter. Did it make any difference? <laughs> oh, I should cover that up. <laughs> Didn't matter. <laughs> oh. 353 left here in the first period, and now a timeout will be taken by the Lady Crabbers. And yeah, well, we got this time out. Let me talk about Zooms. They're giving an award to the senior player on each one of these teams this year who's demonstrated academic excellence. These players will be awarded plaques at a school board meeting after the season. We'd like to thank David Allen and Zooms for the continued support of WHCS and our student athletes. And also want to remind you that you go down to Hampton Chevrolet Jeep Mazda and uh, see what they've got down there. 1073 West Murphy Boulevard. Give them a call, 838. 5450. Those beautiful brand new Chevrolets, 2003s, oh. as well as Mazdas, the Mazda 6. I went, well went, uh, I believe this gentleman has the information okay. you were looking for. <coughs> Ashley Spriggs. Ashley Spriggs, do we have another number for her? Uh, no. It does she, not appear to do. Okay, what was that number? 22. I, I, that's the number we were trying to determine, right? What is it? 22, 22 yeah. Okay, timeout is over with. Seven to two is our score. And the inbounds pass comes to the Lady Bruins. Shot is off the mark. And Tia Walker will take it coast to coast and score. So Walker has five points and her team leads by seven. Battle for the loose ball. Brooke Williams comes up with oh. in and out, no good. And knocked out of bounds, last touch by the Bruins. Going to get some substitutions now. Coming in will be yet another number I don't have a name for, 40 for the Lady Bruins. We're going to have to get some uh, <laughs> updates here as we go along. I do have a number for a name for Ashley Faison, number 20. Bethel is just one out of eight from the field here in the first period. Pass deflected out of bounds by the Bruins. I didn't have her number 22 on my left. I got her. Well, I got her, but I don't know who 40 is. Inbounds pass to the Lady Crabbers. That is Stevens, Dara Stevens. Now Boozman, who looked like she might have traveled, doesn't get the call. I said Boozman, excuse me, Bozeman. And the ball knocked out of bounds by the Crabbers. <laughs> well, there's a Rene Lancaster already. Huh? We have a Rene Lancaster. Well, maybe that's who it is. She's got number 40 now instead of a 24. We'll get our paperwork set. The fans don't care about this. We're going to just keep watching the game and do what we can there until we get the, the names filled in. Bruins have the ball. 2.58 left here in the first period. They trail 9-2. to two, And now it's knocked out of bounds and uh, forced to do so. Ball goes off of the Crabbers. So the Bruins now will trigger once again. This is Williams trying to evade the pressure. Gets it to Johnson who crosses the midcourt stripe. Long jumper, bounds around, no good. Two Bruins battle for the ball. It comes away to the hands of Johnson. Knocked away and they say last touch by Bethel. You look at the Bethel Bruin cheerleaders here at the I guess it's still called the Bruins Den. Isn't that what they call this place, Bob? That's what they used to call it, the De Bruin Den. One of the nicer facilities here on the peninsula. Oh, they've done so a good job of doing Here's a nice long three by CeCe. 
And tipped out of bounds. They'll say the Hampton Crabbers touched it last. So the Bruins will bring it up with 229 left in the first period. And now timeout will be taken by Brian Weaver as he decides he wants to. <laughs> okay, so Lipford is actually number 40. Is that the, is that the plan here? Okay. Uh, now we know who number 40 is. Well, we think we do. Who, who is that kind of gentleman that was That's helping? Ray uh, Smith. He's the athletic director here at Bethel High School. Well, he should know that, shouldn't he? Yes. He went over to the scores table and found out. <laughs> this guy doesn't mess around. He goes right to the people who know. Bozeman That's, yet to hit from the field. 0 for 4 in well, the early going. She's a streak shooter, Tim. She'll miss some, and then all of a sudden she'll get hot, and she'll hit four or five in a row. She's that kind of a, a player. And, uh, and look at that. The Ooh. three Stooges. The three. <laughs> Larry, Curly, and Mo. We got different <laughs> Mo with us tonight. Yeah. I'm, I'm the Curly. <laughs> You're Curly? Mo is up in New York, I understand. <laughs> oh, that's Frick up there. <laughs> oh, for, for, for Frick. We have a very able gentleman filling in. Absolutely. And, uh, does a great job. Mike Hauser giving me these statistics as we go along. Look at some of the fans here. In the contest, this game, as I mentioned, videotaped on the 28th of January, 2003. We'll also have the boys' contest between these two schools forthcoming as well. That's always a big game. And the ball thrown behind the breaking Bruin player, Jones. She threw it where she was, yeah. but she was forgot but she, wasn't she was there running. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, I'm not going to be there after I that's, take another step. That's right. Once I start running, I won't be there. Travers now good pressure on the ball as Tyler loses it. A good job of defense by the Bruins that time. Bruins just two points on the board so far. They work the ball down low nicely, and the ball comes off a little short on the shot by number 25, Kaniqua Jones. I, I think she believes she might have got a foul that time. None was called. Most basketball players will tell you they're fouled on every play. Well, absolutely. If, especially if the ball doesn't go in or if yes, you lose exactly. it. This is Tyler, guarded at the top of the key by Faison. Now this is Bozeman, and Bozeman is fouled on her way to the hoop. Basket didn't go, but she'll get two shots. This, to me, Bob, I thought Bozeman had graduated. It seems like she's been here for a long time. She's, she started started as a freshman, and yeah. this is her third year. Yeah, I mean, Tim. she's not even a senior. That's, <laughs> I mean, well, that's a senior. I, I don't know. I picked right up on that. <laughs> You're quick. Ah, listen, you can't get it past me. Bozeman, who has yet to hit from the field, is perfect from the free throw line. And it's a 10-2 game now with 134 remaining in the first period. Eight-minute quarters in high school ball. There you see the graphics showing Miss Bozeman and the real Miss Bozeman. And this one rattles in and out. Now you put the, put the, the jinx on her. Hex on her, didn't you? Unintentional, I promise you. And we've got a foul as uh, the crabber on the play, uh, Looter, thought she had gotten the ball cleanly. But not so, as uh, ruled by the official. So it's a non-shooting foul, as each team has four team fouls here in the first half. And neither team in the bonus as of yet. Good pressure on the ball, and it's stolen by the Lady Crabbers. This is Luter, and her pass is stolen. Veronica Johnson pushes it up the court. Now she'll take the jumper. And is off the mark, no good. Rebound comes off to Sarah Stevens, number 44. She's a senior, and as according to what I see on the list here, one of only three. And the jumper from way outside, a three by Rashan Luter. So that makes it now a 11-point difference as we are under a minute here in the first period. Johnson will push it up the court. Nice behind the back dribble, but then loses control of it. And Luter will pick it up for the Lady Crabbers. Just making it a fast-paced game. Bozeman way off the mark. She'll call it a pass when they get back to the uh, bench as Tia Walker <laughs> got that air ball and tried to put it up and drew the foul. That was a good pass, right? Yeah, absolutely. Say, what a way to, way to pass. Well, actually, it was one of these you're supposed to get up and catch it and slam dunk it. But. That's right. Yeah, that's right. When you're five foot three, that's yeah. not going to happen. Oh, oh, it doesn't happen that then. Okay. Miss Walker at the free throw line hits it. She is four out of five now. Oh, we got 
wholesale substitution by the Bruins. Number so 322 and, and 32 coming in. Well, Ashley Spriggs is number 22. 32 is Shauna Jones. Yeah. And three is Brooke Williams, who was a starter. You see Miss Walker. Tia. I love this graphics. Oh, I'm, this is terrific stuff. They uh, they obviously had to take that picture and then graphically crop it. And that's exactly what Andy did. He said he spent all day at home, and I, I thought I he was he did. just messing around. No, that man don't mess around. Big time pressure and uh, timeout called before a violation yeah, on the timeline. They may not have got across the timeline in, in the, a lot of 10 seconds. But Brian Weaver took a timeout with 29.2 on the clock here in the first period. Well, Friday we're going to be over at uh, the home of the Phantoms with the same uh, Bruins are going to be the visitors over at uh, Phoebus High School. We can't Friday. do all our games here? Oh, I know you would love to. Oh, this table. we got a huge table here. I'm looking for them to bring out the chicken and the pizza a little <laughs> while here. Oh, that's when we're, we've well, got to go me, to Zoom's for that, don't where's we? Where's Ray? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we've got a big enough table here to have yeah. a little feast. This is great facilities. Here. It is. And we're always warmly welcomed here at the home of the Bruins. And I appreciate everything that Ray Smith has done, Tim. It's, you know, he's got a... I, I talked to him today, and he, I said, I, I need a table for, you know, for three of us to sit there. And he said, okay, I'll put you on the list right underneath the other 230 things I got to do today. <laughs> yeah, really. yeah, <laughs> so, I mean, so. I, I'm sure we were on the bottom of the list, but well, everything's on, on time. We got what we needed. Now, they, these folks, uh, it's a thankless job. Uh, we're playing without a shoe, yeah, Tim. Young lady, uh, that is the Lady Crabbers, Latasha Jones, who's uh, lost – a shoot, but the play will continue nonetheless. Loose ball, travel didn't get called, and the basket does get called. Well, and she Faison. maybe she felt like she didn't have the ball. Or the maybe, maybe I couldn't see the ball. That's a good point. And there you see a uh, shot of the uh, the shoe being redone on uh, on the foot of Latasha Jones as the buzzer sounds to end the first period, and uh, we have struggled <laughs> through. <laughs> the first eight minutes of struggle, if I could say that. Well, yeah, we had well, some numbers that didn't match up. We had some well, shoes flying. We had uh, <laughs> shoe fly pie. We had all kinds Apple of things. Apple pie and daddy. We couldn't get our mechanics working here. <laughs> and, but we are working now. There you see it. There's a scoreboard. As yeah. Bob has something to tell you. Yeah, I tell you, we talk about Zooms and being hungry. I tell you, we'll get some of that Bean Town coffee over here, some fried chicken, potato wedges, Krispy Kreme donuts, and get them the way Tim gets them, a box in one. Uh, ham and see cheese subs, Coke. And that good Sitco gas. And you like I don't the pizza. The gas. That's the only but thing I don't But you like eat. the pizza, don't you? Oh, yeah. Does it give you gas? <laughs> no, no, no. We don't need to go there. <laughs> okay, we don't. That is TMI. <laughs> Too much information. Okay. All right. First quarter, Bethel just 2 of 12 from the free throw line. Six turnovers. Hampton not much better. 3 of 10. And they had three Oh, that's not, not from the free throw line, though, is it? No, no. That's Okay, it was what you no, said, free throw line. I'm sorry. Did I say that? Shoot. Hey. Mr. Care Chicken, from good the field. to see you. From the field, 2 of 12 for Bethel, 3 of 10 for Hampton. Gotcha. I'm sorry. Free throw line was a different story. The uh, the Crabbers scored 8 of their 15 points from the free throw line, missed only 2 uh, out of 10. 8 of 10 from the line. 8 of 10 from the line, 80%. Yeah. Boy, that's yeah. not bad. No, I'll take that anytime. Jeez. All right, second period is oh. underway. Possession arrow gives it to the Crabbers. Hampton in the low, box, a low, uh, like a, a one-four down low. Break out, get the ball. Somebody tries to go back door, trying to get somebody open, get them one-on-one -on -one or open to the basket. Give them a screen. Whoa! Yeah, that that that. Her arm is dangling from that <laughs> no contact foul. <laughs> Could have called something, but didn't. Ball knocked loose. And what do we got? We've got a foul call. Foul will be charged to the Lady Crabbers, and that will be called on Yvette Edwards. That will be her second. I don't know who got that block on that shot, but that was a great block. So the possession foul gives it right back to the Lady Bruins. Edwards picks up her second foul. And we've got three Lady Bruins, excuse me, Lady Crabbers, rather, uh, guarding the ball, but the Bruins are able to get it 
up court. That could have been a double dribble. That was a double dribble. You can't dribble, stop, and then restart. But again, the officials. Well, you can up. if you can get by with it. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. It's only doesn't. It only counts if you get caught. If you got caught. Amen. So a jump ball, and the possession arrow will give it over to the Lady Bruins with 7.07 .07 to go here in the first half. Now you're going to turn something off there, and we're going to be in trouble. <laughs> in the lane, shot is good by number 22, Ashley Spriggs. So now the difference is nine points, 15 to 6 in favor of the Lady Crabbers. She was a late addition, uh, Mike. I think she was just left off. Yeah. Bozeman tries to pick up a, oh. oh, that was a moving pick if I ever saw one. And rightly uh, for the Bruins, they get the ball. Oh, won't go as the Williams shot rolls off the rim. They should have gotten a break on that because that was a terrible lack of a call on that moving pick that was being put. And there's a, a pretty good foul administered by number 42. Don't give the, them an easy shot. Of the Lady Bruins. You uh, know, sometimes things just don't fall. You, she stole the ball, was going, and but you were 42 for who, Tim? Well, we had a 42. We said that was Lipford, but then we were told that that's 40 is Lipford, so then we don't have a name to go along with 42. We don't have a 42 now. Here's, I'm, I, we'll, we'll get this squared away at halftime here. As you watched that replay, and the clear foul as the Lady Crabbers continue to successfully connect from the free throw line. Now that's nine out of 11 as Tyler's first went. So Tyler hits both free throws and the lead is back up to 11. Bruins will trigger with Ashley Faison underneath the basket. And she just just barely got it in and uh, overthrew her intended pass recipient. So the Crabbers get it back off of the turnover. They lead 17 to 6 with 6.15 to go in the half. Wide open underneath, and the shot doesn't go, but the foul will be called on, we believe, Jasmine Lipford. And at the free throw line will be Sarah Stevens. Now we'll get you squared at halftime. There you see the score, 17 to 6. That is the seventh team foul against the Bruins. Of course, it's inconsequential on this play since it was a shooting foul. And Stevens misses on the first of two. A couple of substitutions. Veronica Johnson coming back in along with Kaniqua Jones for Brian Weaver's Lady Bruins. As the kids call her, Nikki Jones. Stevens' second is good. And the lead now a dozen points for the Lady Crabbers. Bruins trying to handle that good full court pressure being applied by the Lady Crabbers. Swinging around for Williams. She's left open. Shot is a little short, and Bozeman has the rebound. This is Tyler. Kashara Tyler, bounce pass in the corner for Bozeman. Down low, Stevens is double teamed and loses the ball. Needed to have a teammate come yep, to her. She sure did. And the shot is up no good, but a foul is called, and Ashley Faison will go to the free throw line. So we've had a fair number of fouls called here in the first half. This foul will be charged as we watch the replay here. Pretty good coverage there, but this is where the contact, and uh, it is initiated by the defender, and you're going to get that call every time. And sometimes when the offensive person goes up like that, they will draw it. We don't have a number 20 for Hampton? Well, you got two Bruins lists there. Well, that's because I'm going to okay. do something with that one. No, we don't have a 20 for Hampton. Well, we've got to find out who number 20 for Hampton is. So the shot by Johnson is off the mark. One out of two. Air ball taken by Williams. CC is really struggling from the uh, from the field. Yeah. 
Oh, Veronica Johnson's shot is no good. And the loose ball underneath taken by Tyler. Rebound to the Crabbers with five minutes remaining. Bozeman still looking for a first basket, no good. Rebound comes off to the Lady Crabbers, uh, Jones, but she loses it to the double team. Ball stolen by the Lady Crabbers. And restolen by Johnson, and then batted away by the Crabbers. Johnson does a good job of chasing it down. She's in the lane, put it up, no good, but she is fouled. She's hustling all over the I'll court. I'll tell you what, fouls on number 20, whoever that is. That's her second, whoever that is. <laughs> Got a lot of mysterious players out here tonight. Here's the replay. Excellent job. Not a bad defensive play, but she no. was moving. If she had been stationary, she would have gotten the uh, the charge. But uh, she moved in to Johnson and drew the foul. And you see a real good look at Miss Veronica Johnson in and out on the free throw. Substitutions getting ready to check in for the Lady Crabbers, and uh, that is Tia Walker back in. And uh, Renee Lancaster uh, checks back in for the Bruins. So Johnson with one more coming. She's one of three so far and just off the mark. So one of four and the rebound comes off to Tyler. Tyler's very opportunistic rebound. She's not particularly tall, but she's nope. gotten a lot of re rebounds here in the first half. Three he's to be exact. Big position. This is Ty uh, Walker and Walker just misses the three point mark. She got the two, but was just inside the line. Nikki Jones has it stolen from behind. You got to watch that yeah. defense. Natasha Jones comes up with it. And see if you're the Crabbers, you want you nice want block. somebody that to uh, handle the ball that's not a primary ball handler, and they will turn the ball over. Ashley Faison did a good job of blocking Bozeman's shot. Now Tia Walker steals and scores. So Walker. Has 11 points unofficially as you see her going over to the bench area. Timeout called by Brian Weaver. He wants a 30 second timeout. Uh, I tell you, he's very upset. The, the ball is to, the ball is going to the, uh, your, your post person, and, and they're not a good ball handler. They turned the ball over twice in a row. And there's, you can see, nice job that time, just going and using the left hand. She's just a ninth grader, Tim. Well, if I'm David Six, I'm a happy camper with all oh, these uh, talented players and, and all of them, or most of them coming back. Bozeman's still 0 for uh, from the field, 0 for 8 to be exact. But you've got uh, you've got Luter, who's a junior. You've got Tyler, who's a sophomore. Walker is the freshman. Yvette Edwards is a sophomore. Bozeman is a junior. Uh, Kim London and Shannon Perry, we haven't seen yet. Those are sophomores. And then Sarah Stevens, the only senior that we've seen act in action here in the first half for the Lady Crabbers. And they're ranked in the top ten in the state. Well, uh, Jasmine Artis is a senior. She's yeah, she hadn't, she hadn't played yet. But, uh, oh, she's one of the starters. She didn't play. She was – I was giving her – I... Oh, no, I know what happened. I know what happened. She's – Tia. Which one is that? Number... Tia Walker. <laughs> I thought that's what I was calling her. Wasn't I calling her Tia? What have I been calling her? Don't call her Tia. Call her Tia. Tia. Not uh, Tia. Tia. <laughs> Potato, potatoes. All right. Thank you. I appreciate that, Scotty. We will make sure that Tia gets recognized appropriately. And, again, we apologize if we mispronounce the name. Really? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. We know better than to do that. That's right. <laughs> King Cole was a merry old soul. One out of two from the free throw line. 22 to 8 for the Crabbers on top. Bozeman. Crabbers doing a nice job with the weave. That was Tia Walker. Bozeman drives and a blocking foul will be called. So Bozeman will go to the free throw once again. Foul is charged uh, to Brooke Williams. That's her first. 
Both teams are over the limit. Each team has eight team fouls as we have hit the 305 mark in the first half. Bozeman connects from the free throw line. She is four out of five unofficially, but yet to score from the field, which is highly unlikely and unusual for this talented junior. Hits both free throws. And the Lady Bruins now will push it up. They've got a two on one, but the pass is off the mark, and that was a Real tough break for them as Renee Lancaster couldn't get the ball was thrown behind her. Just not a good job of leading the uh, the person you're intending to pass for. Difficult to do. There's no question about it. And it, it, and that's what inexperience will uh, will show up each time. Crabbers break the press. Bozeman misses an easy basket, but the follow-up shot is good. And that, was not a, London. and that was not an easy one. She was behind the backboard almost. Bozeman missed the first one. That's, she's 0 for 9 now. Easy snowbird. Couldn't handle it. Ball off the mark. But the follow-up is good by number 24, Renee Lancaster. So now the Bruins hit the double-digit mark, 26 to 10, with 2.23 remaining in the first half. You're watching Hampton and Bethel. On the 28th of January, 2003, Tim Cole, Bob Hintz, Mike Hauser coming to you from the Bruins Den at Bethel High School. Hope you're enjoying this contest. Williams shot in and out. Yeah, boy, I tell you, they've had more shots go around the rim the Bruins have. And they continue to trail by 16. Tyler gets a pick. Now tosses it in the corner. Bozeman still scoreless from the field. That continues as she once again misses. Johnson. Pressure was taken off her, and she decides to pass it left wing. Williams' shot is good for three. Uh, Hampton dropped back into a zone that time, and the Bruins took advantage of that. And Brooke now. Williams connected from three. That'll get you back in the game quick. Bozeman will drive. Ball knocked away by Johnson, but retrieved by Tia Walker. Walker pulls up. Nice fake. Put it up. No good. Off balance shot. The follow is no good by Bozeman. She still has yet to hit from the field. And she just put her hands up in the air to say, what have I got to do? Walter. We got players Dashing into the stands here as Williams went down hard, but she's okay, we're happy to say. So we've got a uh, foul called on the play. Charged against Latasha Jones, number 12. So we've got substitutions now for both teams as Bozeman looks to be coming out of the game. She is 0 for 11, just totally uncharacteristic, uncharacteristic her. of her, exactly. Williams goes to the free throw line for the first time tonight. She's got five points on a two-pointer and a three-pointer and a nice-looking free throw motion there, swish. Well, that was nice, Tim. You know, you got to get that first one on the one and one and uh, had good uh, follow-through. That one doesn't stay in, and the ball goes out of bounds. You'll watch the replay of the action where she drew the foul. And uh, some of the action here <laughs> headed into the stands. <laughs> Good work. Nice replay. Inbound pass. No good on the basket, but fouls will be uh, called, and Letitia Thomas will go to the free throw line. That was a great inbound. Put the pressure right on the Crabbers, got the ball right in the box, went up strong with it, didn't get the roll, but uh, will shoot two. And that uh, will be two regardless as they are now in the bonus situation with ten team fouls, eight against the Bruins. Thomas's first is off the mark. So the Bruins have not hit particularly well from the free throw line. I've got some unofficial statistics. They've missed five out of eight. Make that... Six, Six nine, out of nine. nine. Oh, wow. So only three of nine have gone in. 33% from the free throw line, whereas the Crabbers have done much better. Under a minute now. Walker, and uh, she loses the ball, but it's retrieved by the Lady Crabbers. And then we almost got one. 
You got that. Mike Hauser got that. That was an assist to Mike? <laughs> an assist to Mike because it wasn't hit our well, camera. How, 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 how come you were like this? <laughs> I was under the table ducking. What do you mean? <laughs> Johnson will trigger. And uh, in the game now, Shante Best, number five for the Lady Bruins. Johnson with a nice exhibition of dribbling. She's quite a ball handler. Yes, she is. Lady Bruins shot is up and good. So the Bruins get a break as Shayla Gregory connects. Well, they got a chance to cut it to, yeah, to down single to, digits. Down to 10. If they can uh, stop them here and go and down and score. It. Under 10 seconds to go. They could take the last shot. And uh, Bruin runs into a Bruin, causing the travel as Veronica Johnson was run over by her teammate. Well, I can tell you who one of our officials for the after, for the evening is going to be. The Mike Powers over there. 5.1 on the clock. Officials huddling at the scorer's table about something. I'm not sure what they're... Uh, Discussing, and I believe a technical foul has been called. I'm not sure on the bench or uh, a particular coach or what, but uh, going to get two shots. I'd like to know what that was about. In any event, Tia Walker will go to the uh, charity stripe to get two freebies. There's something on the floor. It looks like a piece of paper, a couple of pieces of uh, Debris. Yeah, and I'd seen that earlier. It wasn't thrown or anything. It was nothing, nothing I know of. But the Walker will get two, and then the Crabbers will get the ball with the final 5.1 seconds. As Tia Walker, she missed her first free throw, but she's six in a row since. And I did it again. I'm sorry, Miss Walker. I didn't mean to do it. <laughs> By the power I have. You have power. So one out of two for Tia Walker. And now the Crabbers will inbound it right in front of David Six and the Hampton bench. They lead by 11. That led by 15. Three seconds, two seconds, one shot is blocked nicely by Ashley Spriggs as the buzzer sounds to end the first period, excuse me, first half rather. And we've reached halftime. Our score is Hampton 27 and Bethel 16. We'll return to the Bruins' den for the third period of action after a brief timeout. Here at halftime, we're just about set as both teams have returned to the court. Real quickly, some halftime statistics for you. Each team struggled from the field as they both hit just 26%. Hampton, 6 of 23. Bethel, identical, 6 of 23. The difference in the game, 14 of 18 free throws for Hampton, just 3 out of 10 for the Bruins. The, uh, the Crabbers turned it over 7 times, Bruins 12 times. Leading scorer in the first half was Tia Walker with 12 for the Crabbers, and Brooke Williams was the leading scorer for the Lady Bruins with half of that total. Six. The Bruins, Bruins still in that man the man And the Lady <laughs> Crabbers get a basket from Jasmine Artis to kick off the second half. And they up their lead now back to 13 points. Bad pass tipped away and controlled by Bozeman, who was 0 for 11 in the first half. She missed. 11 of the 26 attempts the Crabbers took, and they still led by 11 points at halftime. Well, you're making the foul shots, and I know right now that's what Brian Weaver is talking about. 
And David Six is, we're going to have a, take a 30-second uh, time out here. We're going to think about it. Something he didn't like, the way they were moving the ball around. So just underway here in the third period and the quick timeout by the Lady Crabbers to get squared away. We've Second got half is brought to you in part by Park Lawn Wood Funeral Home where Nancy Staten is the manager. And hey. you're looking into the huddle. Brian Weaver instructing the Bruins. And of course, second half also brought to you by Hampton Mazda Jeep, 1073 West Murky Boulevard. Give them a call, 838-5450. Little uh, twist to our regular schedule, uh, uh, our coverage rather, as you saw David Six, is we have a floor camera at either end of the court. Oh, well, one, hey, you know, one of these, they could get each other. Yes, they could, <laughs> dueling cameras. No, I mean, they could shoot each other, <laughs> put each other on camera. They probably will before we're done. <laughs> Travers uh, moving the ball around nicely. This is Luter to Walker to Stevens. Her turnaround jumper is oh, another net. That was a nice release that time. Got a good job. Uh, did a good job of turning around and getting her, uh, bas her, her shoulder square to the basket, Tim. Johnson will kick it over to Williams, and her shot is off the mark. Chased down in the corner by Stevens. And her pass is finally controlled by artists jasmine artists left wing for walker and walker has it blocked underneath back come the lady bruins down by 15. shot is off the mark and bodies flying all over the place <laughs> no foul called you're right there's body flying no blood no foul i guess walker will drive again and still can't get it to go and back come the lady bruins so both teams cold here to start the second half Johnson will kick it back outside. We've made played a little more than a minute with one basket scored. Now Walker, Artist. one on one, and she is fouled. Went down hard, but the foul was not a hard foul in that I, sense. Artis just picked uh, Veronica Johnson's pocket. That's what uh, led to Hampton having that one on one, then going down to the other end, and they uh, puts Tia Walker on the line. Good looking freshman, Tim. Miss Walker, six of eight from the free throw line for half of her dozen points in the first half, and she hits the first of two. And if you if you have a, a player that's going to handle the ball a lot and get fouled a lot, you, you want her to be a good foul shooter, and she obviously is. She hasn't missed but a couple of them, and only missed them because you put the hex on her. That's exactly why. And she gets both of them this time, so the hex is off. 17-point difference. Now, the Crabbers are picking up half court rather than full court, but then they're double-teaming right as soon as they get across the half-court line. Johnson barely gets it over to Williams in time. She's double teamed and is knocked out of bounds. Still belongs to the Lady Bruins. Tim, you know when you double team, somebody is wide open, but when you're double teamed, you can't find that person for anything. I mean, it's like, where in the world is she? And a foul has been called. This one will be going against Walker. Tia Walker with her third Personal foul. Player control foul. And a foul on the reach in after the ball was stolen. Look, That'll go against. I, I watched the Crabbers that time, Tim. They immediately double teamed the ball and the and the defense rotated over, and that's why they stole at that time, and, and then ended up picking up a foul. CC Almond, number 42. So we got our numbers squared away at halftime. We had Jasmine Lipford correct to begin with at 40. We we're given some uh, incorrect information, and it's been corrected now. Follow up, good second effort by. The Lady Crabbers, Yvette Edwards. Well, Jasmine Lipford did a good job of blocking the first shot. And Tim, she's just a sophomore. 
And this time Edwards will be a little too aggressive and draws the foul. That'll be her third. Ashley Spriggs will check back in for the Lady Bruins. She will replace Nikki Jones, who just came out. Off balance shot goes off the rim. Back but that was the Crabbers. best thing for her to do. She couldn't find anybody to pass the ball to. Artist's shot is too strong, and they foul called on the follow. That'll be whistled against Brooke Williams. That will be her second. Watch the replay here. You're going to see the foul coming up. Right there, got her on the left arm. Perfect replay, gentlemen and ladies. If we have ladies working the replay, who, who's our replay person? Uh, Mike Gawinski. Well, he's definitely no lady. Well, I'm not too sure if he's a gentleman either. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> I never said that. That was not oh. part of the conversation. Oh, I, thought, I thought that was part of it. Well, no. That's Bob who said that. <laughs> don't, don't call me there, Mike. So both free throws for Bozeman, who has yet to hit from the field. Edwards in some serious, excuse me, Johnson rather, in some serious trouble over there. Well, you get too and close to the sideline, Tim, and you got an extra defensive man there, and you step out of, out of bounds. They were trailing by 11, and now they're trailing by 21. They've yeah. been outscored 10 points here at the beginning of the. Uh, well, they have yet to score. Almost half the period, and they're stuck on 16. They had 16 at half. They actually, uh, Bruins and the, and the Crappers played 12 12 in the second period. And the Crabbers have come out and uh, played really tough defense, and now a foul is called, and that will go against Renee Lancaster, number 24. Zooms has given an award to the senior player on each of the teams this year who has demonstrated academic excellence. These players be awarded plaques at a school board meeting after the season. We'd like to thank David Allen and Zooms for the continued support to WHCS and our student athletes. Again, great replay action showing the contact and the foul. She made her first. And you did it. She missed the second. And CC got the rebound and missed another one. Yeah, but she better, we better start quit saying that. She's going to get mad at us. And we've got a foul on a reach in. Oh, number 11. Looter. That'll be your third as you watch the replay here. Could have been called uh, uh, before that play. Could have been called against uh, Yvette Edwards. Ball loose on the baseline. Shoved, almost shoved out of bounds was Walker, but didn't get a call. Bozeman still. Ofer. Ofer. Offensive board by Walker. Kick it back outside Bozeman. Now she's Yeah, she's she going to get one in a minute. So that was just inside the three point arc. And it makes it 40 to 16. 13 nothing here in the third period in score in favor of the Lady Crabbers. 3.05 to go as uh, we've played more than a half of the third period and the Lady Bruins have been scored upon and have yet to score. And we got a travel call. Interesting call. She got the ball and shuffled her feet. Yep. With and no you, one on her. Well, and you can't do that if you don't no. have, unless you got some music, I think. That's right. I can't even do it if I do have music. <laughs> they call that dancing? Well, a little. Turn the ball over on the call is dancing. A little two-step. A little two-step two shuffle. Yeah, a little two-step shuffle. Under three minutes to go in the third period. Bruins still looking for their first points in the third. 
And they travel. Good defense by Luther to cause the turnover. So Artis will inbound the ball for the Lady Crabbers. Kashara Tyler, 14, enters for the uh, Crabbers, and she's the one handling the ball. Walker, feed down low, and a foul against Spriggs. Well, that was the right thing to do. Yep. Scott her with the body. Watch this. Yeah, body and a little bit of arm. Yeah, little arm, little body, little everything. Edwards at the free throw line. And she hits the first. She is two of three from the free throw line. I'm going to slip my jacket on. It's a little nippy in the Bruin Den tonight. Oh, that's why I wear this long sleeve. Yeah. I'm a man. I don't have to wear long sleeves. <laughs> Just get cold and turn blue <laughs> all you want. Go put my jacket on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take my jacket and go home. <laughs> oh, no, don't do that. Both free throws good by Edwards. And the lead now expanded to 42 to 16. As the Lady Crabbers have outscored them 15 to nothing. And that one won't get you much help either. Good job of saving it along the base. Or the sideline, rather. And anticipated beautifully by Bozeman, who will get her second basket from the field tonight. And the lead now 44 16, an 18 point, a 28 point lead. I almost lost track of that one, a 28. And the ball knocked off of the Lady Bruins, should belong to the Lady Crabbers. It does. That double team, uh, when the Crabbers come across half court, has just got them to the point they can't, they're not getting a good look at the basket to shoot or nothing. The Crabbers' defense has just been stifling. Under two minutes to go in the third. Bozeman dishes, but it's off the foot of her teammate, but Bozeman gets it back, kicks it out to Walker, who will try the jumper. No good. Nice battle underneath for the ball and controlled by Shayla Gregory. A good job of positioning herself. Gregory. And the pass is loose. Lady Bruins come up with it. And then they step on the baseline. A minute 33 to go in the third. Crabbers by 28. Good job of stealing the ball by Renee Lancaster. And again, you see the, the Bruins get themselves in trouble like yep. that. They stop that dribble on the side. And there's a foul. And that'll be an intentional foul. And we'll draw two uh, shots on the ball. Uh, th no doubt a, a definite push in the back. When the player is past you and you foul them like that, watch this replay. It wasn't, it wasn't a dirty foul, but she definitely shoved her in the back. And uh, drew the, uh, I guess it's called a flagrant foul. Okay, not fragrant. Flagrant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fragrant. <laughs> Tia Walker. Three in a row now. And she can make it a 30-point game here if she hits this one and does. She's, just, she's a freshman. Are we going to yeah. have to have a check on that? We're going to have uh. a proof check here? Nope, she is a legitimate freshman, Tim. Is you see David Six over there grinning the whole time. Minute eight left here in the third. Hampton will get the ball as well. So a, a uh, an extra advantage to that foul is that you get the ball as well. Tyler. Shannon Perry in the ball game now, number 35. Also, LaDonna Pierce has gotten into the game as well. Under a minute. Lady Bruins might get a basket. No, ball is on the floor, loose, 
scramble for it, taken by the Lady Crabbers. Tyler comes up with a loose ball. Left wing pass for Walker, and Walker will kiss the glass and put it in. So Walker had 12 at halftime. She's added six more points. So she's got 18 as we are down to 25.7 seconds remaining in the third period. Bruins hopeful of getting a score here to break the double zeros for the quarter, and they do. It's a three-pointer. Shanna Jones put it up from outside the arc. And we've got a foul, blocking foul on the baseline. 3.5 seconds. You were pointing at uh, something to yeah, tell Yeah, we'll me. do this in between yeah, quarters. That sounds like a good idea. Watch this replay. You're going to see Walker and uh, just got there too late, did the defender. That was Spriggs who got called for her third foul. Walker can't hit the free throw. And the buzzer will sound to end the third period. So we've played three, and our score after three periods is Hampton 48 and the Bruins 19. We will pick a player of the game from each one of these teams tonight. That player will receive a trophy and a shirt. The trophy comes from Trophy World. They're located in the historic Hilton Village of Newport News. For all your recognition and award needs, trophies, plaques, and custom engraving, contact Bob Hillen at Trophy World 595-7354. Mention this announcement, get special pricing. Shirt comes from Tidewater Team Sports, your one-stop sports headquarters for screen printing, embroidering, uniforms, and apparels. Call 594-0411 and talk to David Chubb or Terry McNamara. T-Mac. I want to remind you that we'll have the boys' contest on the same channel between these two teams. Hampton and Bethel always a battle regardless of the records. And then we'll be at Phoebus High School for the Bruins and the Phantoms. That game will be played Friday night, the 31st of January. And we'll have it for you here, both the boys and the girls contest here on Channel 46. Eight minutes remaining in the contest. As the Bruins will inbound, they had just three points in that third period. They were outscored 21 to three as the Crabbers broke the game open. Hampton seven of nine shooting. Bethel just one of five in that third period. You don't and shoot but five times, Tim. You're not going to make many, many. You're not going to score a lot of points. And the free throws, 10 of 13 for the Crabbers in that period. So, uh, yep, they uh, they just simply. That defense, a half-court trap, just took Bethel completely out of any offense that they could get, had a chance to get going. Bozeman, who uh, didn't hit until the third period, misses that one. She's got two out of uh, about 14 so far in the contest. And this one put in by Johnson. 48. Veronica Johnson scores. She's got three in the contest, and the lead is 37. 27. Get it right yet. 27. There you see it in the corner of your screen, one of the new graphics that we have developed here for Channel 46 to keep you better informed during the contest. Bozeman is fouled, and the basket will count. She did a great job of protecting the ball with her body, Tim, and drawing the foul. She slowed down and yep. waited for the defender to get there. You'll watch this on the replay. Yeah, we'll get it for you. Here we go. And watch this. She just slowed down just a little. She saw the defender coming and then just knew she was going to draw the contact. Right, and protected the ball with her body. Classic so, move. So Jasmine Lipford picks up her fourth personal foul as Bozeman hits the free throw. So Bozeman's just been deadly from the free throw line. She has connected on eight of nine from the free throw line. And the only reason she messed that one was because of you. Wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had such power. Yeah. Now the Bruins are in a zone. I mean, the uh, Crabbers are in a zone, matchup zone, it looks like. And 
Oh, now they're back into a man. Well, I'm not sure what they're playing. It's a scramble. Bozeman on the night now, officially three of 17. A night she'll undoubtedly want to forget from that personal point of view. Absolutely. She's glad her team is winning, and they're up by 30, so there's not much jeopardy there. But uh, when you're uh, when you're such a quality player as Bozeman is, and then to have that kind of night, three of 17, that's just almost unheard of. She's had some good shots, too. They just haven't gone. We've got to travel before the shot. 6.23 remaining in the ballgame. Tim Cole, Bob Hintz, and Mike Hauser along with the Channel 46 crew. Hope you're enjoying our coverage of high school sports. We've got a couple more regular scheduled games for you. We'll have Bethel at Phoebus. That game being played January 31st this Friday night. And then next Friday night, the following Friday night, we'll be at Kickatan High School when these Hampton Crabbers will come calling in our final regular season coverage here on Channel 46. And want to let the fans know that uh, this game is brought to you in part by Parkland Wood Funeral Home. They're conveniently located at the Hampton Center Parkway in North Armstead Avenue. Give them a call at 827-4670. Nancy Staten is the manager. And of course by Hampton Chevrolet Mazda, Jeep Mazda, Black of Rock. They got the pickups, they got the new and the used cars. Go down and see them at 1073 West Merkin Boulevard or give them a call at 838-5450. First of two is good by Faison. And second one is short. Bruins do get the offensive rebound. Faison tips it over to Williams. Shot is short. And again, no lack of hustle by these Bruins. They may not be winning on the scoreboard, but they're hustling. Long lead pass for Walker. Does a great job of saving it on the baseline. And then gives to Bozeman. Got it. There you go. Not going to keep her down for long. She's got four baskets now after a horrendous start. Shot is up and no good, but Tyler is guilty of the foul. Zooms one of 14 convenient locations on the peninsula. Go over and see them. Get your bean town coffee, your chicken, your potato wedges, your pizza. Fill up that car with that Sitco gas. And buy some donuts from Krispy Kreme. Let, let's not talk about that right now. I am boxing I, one. Tim I loves them. Without dinner at this point. Oh, really? Oh, shoot. Well, I got, I got, some, here from the, I got some nuts. And, uh, all right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah, don't, we, don't listen to everything Mike says. <laughs> Since you're the only retired one amongst the group here, you oh, should bring I worked today. I was at the golf course. Nobody oh. nobody, nobody oh, Mikey, <laughs> he was at the golf course today. <laughs> nobody showed up. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> well, I got a 10.52 uh, tea time tomorrow. You want to come and join me? 10.52? No. Yeah. I, I don't play when I can't find the ball for the snow. Oh, there's no snow on the golf course. No, Is, is that, a, is that a, a, an axiom or is that factual now? That's a fact. Oh, okay. It's the facts, nothing but the facts. It's nothing but the facts, ma'am. Dragnet coming to your oh, yeah. ABC coming station. Coming back. Married Sunday. with children, uh, Al Bundy. <laughs> I just can't figure him out. I can't either. And there you yeah, see Fendolf Taylor. Uh, Fendolf Taylor. But for those of you over 20. <laughs> you may not know who we're talking about. More like over 40. <laughs> if you're under under 40, you may not know who we're, we're talking about. But you got uh, Joe Friday, the original Dragnet. Bad 714. Yep. He played in one of the <laughs> one of the greatest movies I've ever seen, without it being a classically great movie, the D.I. Did you ever see yep, that? Yep. Jack Webb and as the D.I. He didn't have to starch his clothes. He was so stiff. They they just <laughs> amazing stuff. Got a foul called. That's on CC. CC picks up the foul. That will be her first. Here's the replay, right here. Well, you got 34, but actually that's 34, not 33. See, you fooled me there. That's not CC. That's Kim London. Well, 34. There you go. I'm just trying to mess you up. <laughs> you succeeded. Okay. I don't need a lot of help. Oh. <laughs> I do just fine messing myself up. Gotcha. 
One of three for Ashley Faison at the free throw line. 531 left in the contest, and she hits the second. She's two of four. She's got four points unofficially for tonight. Tyler in the corner. LaDonna Pierce, now they swing it around. This is Tyler on the far side. Top of the key to Walker. Bozeman down low, a little too strong. Offensive rebound for the Lady Crabbers. Tyler will set it up to Pierce. Pierce wants to pass it down low. Can't find anybody, now she does. And that one is a little too strong by Kim London. And then the Lady Bruins lose it on the baseline. 53-23 as you see on your score there. Grabbers will not hurt their state ranking with this victory in their uh, pocket. 448 remaining in the contest. Final score, the only thing in doubt at this point. Again, we remind you, boys contest, Hampton and Bethel here on channel 46. Bozeman drives the lane oh, and shovels it in. Oh, nice, nice little shuffle. She had, you know, we've already attested to much too often. Struggled from the field tonight, but she's got five buckets here in the second half. And she's got 18 points unofficially. And the Crabbers can't get that one, but Bozeman will follow. No good. They're playing pass off the board. That one won't go. But at the free throw line will be LaDonna Pierce, number 20. There you see Miss Pierce. The aggressiveness of uh, both of these teams are very good, but the Crabbers trapping uh, defense is just taking Bethel out of any kind of of uh, offensive uh, sets they want to get into, any kind of rhythm they're trying to get into. It's just they just can't do anything. Bozeman, uh, her struggles uh, already have uh, been mentioned way too often, but her, the good side is she's 5 of 10 here in the second half, so she uh, undoing some of those bad statistics from earlier. Pierce misses the free throw. Nice job that nice time. Jumper by Brooke Williams. She's got nine. Uh, she checked that eight points in the game. Well, she did, what she did, Tim, that time was she moved in her, and went to the basket before the double team could get there. Down low for Bozeman, and she'll score. So Bozeman with just five points in the first half, but she has added 15 here in the second half to uh, bring her total unofficially to 20 on the night. Off the, Off glass. the glass. That's right for a three. Why not? Shauna Jones, that's her second triple tonight. She's got six points on two baskets. Ruins steal the pass. Coast to coast score. That's Renee Lancaster. She's got four. 58 30. 324 remaining in the contest. This is Pierce. Nice feed down oh, low. Wasn't that a nice touch on that Just pass? Just a nice little bounce pass oh. to Bozeman to make it 60 to, 60 to 30. They've doubled the score on them. Back at the other end, the easy bucket for Lancaster. So the Lady Bruins, who just couldn't find the basket at all in the third period, have added 13 points here in the fourth. Shot partially blocked. Good defense by the Lady Bruins. Short underneath. No good. Loose ball. And the Lady Crabbers save it finally. I, start, I was uncertain for a moment there. Who was going to end up with the ball? Bozeman did finally end up with it for the Lady Crabbers. They lead 60 to 32, 215 to go in the ballgame. Pierce feeds Bozeman, kick it back outside. Kim London short with a shot. And back come the Bruins. One on two. Okay, the young lady, Renee Lancaster, scored six points here in the fourth period. And when she did a good job, Tim, and she gathered herself. She was not, she didn't get herself out of control going to the basket that time.
Under two minutes to go now. In the lane, Pierce's shot is good. So LaDonna Pierce gets a bucket. And it's 62-34. And now a timeout called by Brian Weaver. I guess he wants to build a suspense to the final well, buck he had, 33. He's got three uh, young the ladies time. waiting to get in the ball game. And he's got timeouts. You can't take to the locker room. So he's yeah, you can't take, All right, you can't take play, them home with you. Players of the game, yes. Mr. Bob. Yes, I need those. Well, I'm going to go with – Oh. Do I get to pick the uh, Hampton one? Are you pick them both. Yep. That's my player of the game, Miss Tia Walker. The one time I called her Tia, but it is Tia. What is her uh, phone? What's her number? What's her phone number? <laughs> <laughs> her phone number is 23. Watch this long, arching three-pointer. Great. Right. All right, and? And our player of the game. I guess I get to do this uh, for both of these, huh? Yeah. All right, we're going to go with it's a toss-up between uh, two players. Show me who you got. I'm going with here or here. Let's go here. Okay. And that will be number three, Brooke Williams, who will get the player of the game from the Lady Bruins. And it was uh, close between herself and Veronica Johnson and Renee Lancaster, who's come on strong here. But uh, Williams did a good job of doing what she needed to do out there, just didn't get much support. And the Bruins lose it on the baseline. Could call a foul there if you get knocked to the floor. Usually there's a foul call, but didn't get it that time. Minute 28. Grabbers will register another victory. That'll make their record, I believe it's going to be 12 and 3. We had a hard time getting some of the uh, <coughs> the records. You did a much better job of getting statistics and stuff when you worked for the Daily Press. You know that? Yeah, you notice that? <laughs> they go to Sports Combine and it goes, eh, <laughs> nothing there. Oh, well, Mr. Killen hadn't put it in there, so you can't well, get it if you can't, it's it, not it, in there. It's a lot of times it says on there, school has not submitted information. Yeah, so. well, that's a lot of times that's exactly that's, the case. Exactly. So I don't want to, I'm not picking on Bob. No, I'm not either. Although he's he deserves it. <laughs> We can pick on him real good because he's, he's up in New, New York. Yeah, uh, we can't hear us. His uh, no, his mother-in-law is not doing well, and uh, him and Tina are up there. Uh, I'm certainly sorry to hear that. Yeah. Baseline jumper is good by Shannon Perry, number 35. Just a sophomore. David Six with a young team. A good young team. That's always the best kind. Yes, it is. Pretty good contact there. No foul called. And the ball goes out of bounds with 50.9 ticks on the clock. Just picked up talking about Daily Press. The award winning Ken Silver, the photographer extraordinaire yeah, down there next down to Ron Baton. Yeah, if you get a shot of Ron Baton, you'll get, you get Ken. Too tight of a traffic jam there to get that well, pass. Well, that's, you know, bounce passes are good, but not that close. That she could almost uh, hand the ball yeah. off to be better <laughs> off. Or taking the shot and had somebody there for rebound. So the Bruins will push it up. They'll just barely get it across the timeline. Jumpers off the mark. And loose ball picked up by the Lady Bruins. Batted around and finally controlled by the Crabbers. Ten seconds in the ball game. Shot off the mark, no good. Offensive rebound, no good. Loose ball. And who touched last? They say the Crabbers knocked it out of bounds. 5.1 on the clock. We're going to wrap this up pretty quickly from here. And Again, our players of the game, Brooke Williams from Bethel High School and Tia Walker is our Lady Crabber player of the game as the buzzer sounds. And we want to thank Tidewater Team Sports and the Trophy World. Yes, we do. I want to mention to you that, uh, again, we'll have the boys contest between these two teams here on Channel 46. And a reminder that Friday night, the 31st, we will be at Phoebus High School and the same Bethel Bruins 
will be in town to play the Phantoms. We'll have that game for you and watch it here on Channel 46. So a nice contest has been brought to you by Zooms with 14 convenient peninsula locations by Hampton Chevrolet at 1073 West Mercury Boulevard. Wave to the folks, guys. And in part by Park Lawn Wood Funeral Home, where Nancy Staten is the manager. So that's going to do it for us here at the Bruins Den at Bethel High School. The final score, Hampton 65, Bethel 34. For Bob Hintz and Mike Hauser, this is Tim Cole. Thanks for watching. Good night, everybody.